Welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Um, last night when I went to sleep, apparently my computer decided to upgrade to Windows 11, so uh, it screwed up half of my software and everything I wanted to do today, so I've got to try to get that squared away. So if things are a little bit wonky in this video, please try to understand. Uh, I would have been perfectly happy staying on Windows 10 forever, but it is what it is. I don't like 11 so far. All the simple things I used to know how to do are all completely changed. Um, today, I want to talk about the undateable American women. And um, and I suppose this could actually be for Australian and New Zealand and most westernized women today. And I've got an article I'm going to read at the end of this that that is from a perspective that is not, I mean, that I agree with, but it's not from my words. It's, for, it's from a little bit older guy that um, is kind of seeing the same things I see. And I remember back in, I want to say it was 2015 when I decided, 2015, 2016, whatever it was, when I decided to do my little travels and backpacking and flying around the world. And, and I, I hit 36 countries, starting with new, uh, starting with Iceland and wrapping all the way around the world and ending in New Zealand and then flying home. Um, when I got home, dating had changed just in that, I don't know, year and a half uh, dating had changed, women had changed, their percept, uh, per perceptions on uh, on online dating changed because I was still trying to use the apps a little bit maybe to meet somebody fun. And I, I before I left, I got matches. And when I came back, I wasn't so much. And in that time frame is when Instagram took off and and the OF stuff took off and, and women decided they deserve one percenters because apparently a new generation of people had hit the dating apps. But I want to kind of walk down through why I think the, the va and again, this is always in not all, but a, a majority, at least at this point, if not the vast majority of women have become completely undateable. So I'm going to start out with this. This is the one type of girl that you're going to meet. She says, I make $800 in tips uh, a day as a bikini baris barista. Customers can be scary, but I love my job and its perks. Now, again, I have no hate against this woman wanting to dress cute and, um, you know, and, and make her money, uh, to make her money, uh, as a, but the thing is she becomes an object. Yes. Guys will look at her and say she's hot and I'll make her my girlfriend, but she's not marriage material. Uh, she's probably not long-term, uh, dating material. And, and it's not that even necessarily she's a bad person because she does this. And that's what makes her not dating material. What it is, is that men know that a woman, when a woman is viewed for her body and she puts herself out there like that, two things usually happen. One, she's so extremely comfortable with her sexuality that she'll probably have a high body count. And number two, that uh, with a body like that, there's going to be somebody that's taller, darker, handsomer, with more money that's going to hit on her, pass a number, and she's, again, most of the time going to use hypergamy and level up to another guy. And so a lot of guys say, yeah, I date it, but in, you know, I'd use her as my slam piece, but it, I know it, this is not going to go anywhere. So that's one time. So when I, when I say undateable, uh, what I mean is that they're, they're not long-term, it, like it's not going to turn into a serious relationship. Um, and, and here's the other type. Now this is, uh, uh, I don't know if this has sound to it or not. This is another video and these are the cam girls. And, and I believe this is somewhere in Asia. Uh, where they're just lining up and, and this has become a business. It's now such a big business of all these girls. Uh, and, and again, I don't know where this is, whether uh, I just don't, I, I don't know what language that is. I don't know if that's South Korean or what it is, but where so many women are, are now becoming OF creators. They're becoming Instagram quote unquote models um, where again, they're using their looks and they look down upon, you know, 90% of men. This is a photo someone posted online and they said, Hey, someone's a cam girl because they're, you know, they're, they're, uh, they got the pretty red lights. And if you, and if you, you know, look up, it looks like there's a purple one up here and you could say, yeah, maybe there's a couple of them in this apartment. But when you start pulling back and looking at the big picture, you can see that there are a lot of them. And now maybe, again, maybe this is a business that is cranking this stuff out. Um, and the girls keep to get to keep a percentage of it. Maybe this is a college town. I don't know if this is, you know, in I don't know if this is in Europe or in Asia or what. But the point is, there's so many women that are going for this because it's it, there's no stigma to it anymore. You know that all of them can use their bodies to make money. 
And so guys, guys are finding that there's a, a ton of women, both in the real world and on the dating apps that are just using this to promote their work. And here's another example of it. You know, this is from uh, TikTok, and this is a girl that, that posted, when you realize you're 21, you're a broke single mom who doesn't have any family that wants to watch your kids so you can work, currently living in government assistance in a custody battle with a narcissist, all while trying to build your life as a content creator to inspire other single moms who are struggling as well. It's, it's like when they grow up, they see, you know, some some content creators that have great success in, I don't know, like Pokemon or, or um, Amaranth or some of these other ones that are making millions and millions and millions of dollars, and they think they're going to get on the fast track. And they think they're going to, you know, just be able to do the same things that these other girls are doing. And it doesn't work out well. But 21 single mom. And that's the other thing that guys keep running into is all the single moms. All the, um, I, I had a, let me see if I, I, I have the image here. Let me see if I have the image. Yes, here it is right here. Almost a quarter of U.S. children live in single parent homes more than any other country. And that's the United States, 23%. And that's not where 23% are, where dad's not involved. That's 23% where it's just mom. No stepdad, no boyfriend, no husband, 25%. And we're leading the world. Russia's closing in at 18%. Uh, Sao Tome and uh, Prince, uh, Principe is at 19%. UK, 21%. They're, they're gaining ground on it. They didn't have Australia on this because it says no data. But I wouldn't be surprised if it's, and this is from Pew Research from 2010 till 2018. So how much worse is, is it is now? Or how much worse is it now? So then you have the raging narcissists. This is from a woman. I pulled up her picture. This is from this woman. Now, again, I'm not going to say she's like vomit inducing, horrible person. I'm not like, I'm not there. But I think you could say at best she's average. You know, just kind of an average woman out there. I don't know her age. But she, she, this is literally from January 24th of 2023. So you know this image she's had as a writer for longer than just the last couple of weeks. So I'm sure she's older than that now. And she says, why don't guys approach me? And she says, oh, I like to, you know, you like to stay at home. That's legitimate. You look like the best part of an iceberg. She says, maybe you're too serious or intimidating, which a lot of women are. Guys assume you're taken uh, because, you know, you're so beautiful that somebody must have, have snagged you up or you've got ret resting bitch face. And the other thing, too, is, is that men are shamed for talking to women now. Men are put down for talking to women. Here's the one that made me laugh. You're too perfect to be real. You're just, you look like you're too out of reach for him. <laughs> so, so apparently she thinks, yeah, maybe, maybe she's too perfect to be real. Uh, consider self-improvement. Yes. Blame yourself. No. So if you're a hot mess that doesn't dress up and maybe you're overweight and doesn't take care of yourself, yes, you should improve yourself, but don't blame yourself for your, your lack of, of doing anything about it. Here's some of her other articles. Why am I always the other woman? She says, top five uh, most attractive zodiac signs. Yeah, okay, this is where women are right now. What's the red nail theory? Oh, red nail polish, maybe it'll get you a guy. And then they're, they're, they're opinionated and soft. Now, this is written by a guy. So men are becoming soft too. But, but when I see stuff like this, I'm like, oh, sweet summer child. You are, you're such a, a weak and effeminate man. And the same thing for women is they overreact to everything and everything upsets them. This just says, uh, the title is no laughing matter. Why it's time to cancel Facebook's ha ha reaction. It was developed to enable users to express laughter, but it has turned into the emoji of ridicule and scorn. So to protect fragile men and women's mostly women's, uh, fragile egos, we need to tell people they can't say certain things and they can't respond with emojis, and let's get rid of memes and all the other bad words. And here's the main article I wanted to read from. Why are American women undateable? And this is from a Mark McDonald uh, MD. 
And I, I think he makes a good point here. But the reason why I read these articles is because many times people will say, oh, Joker's just butt hurt or uh, incels or whatever. This is coming from an, an older guy and making observations like I am, but they're not my words. So it's not, it's not just me that sees this. This is a lot of guys. He says, I don't even want to go on dates anymore. They just feel like a chore. I heard this from my 24-year-old uh, patient this week. I hear it frequently from men everywhere. I hear it in bars, at professional conferences, over coffee, at lunch. I hear it because American women have become undateable. He says, American women today suffer from a combination of emotional and character characterologic. Well, that's a new word for me. Uh, characterologic pathology that renders them unfit to be romantic partners to men. On the emotional side, they're angry, anxious, dysregulated. Men find them exhausting and not at all fun to be around. In addition to their unpleasant emotions, men must also contend with their toxic personality traits, narcissism, ingratitude, and overbearing and judgmental attitude that appears to be consist or constant. American women approach dating as a fact and fault-finding mission with a degree of arrogance that can only come from a profound absence of self-awareness. They have no idea what their role is in the encounter or how to properly support the man who is leading the date. They act as saboteurs rather than facilitators. Most men are tired of this. And I think he brings up a good point here that it seems like today dating's not about maybe getting to know somebody and see what you have in common and seeing if you like each other. It's almost like a struggle of wills. It's almost like a veiled argument and a job interview where she's trying to suss out everything that's wrong with you. You're trying to figure out if if you can either impress her or get to know her a little bit. And in the end, you just walk away from it going, that's not, that wasn't fun. That wasn't enjoyable. Having to dance around your words so you don't insult them. It's just tiring. And I think a lot of guys, it used to be, and in many cases it still is, where one a guy might say, you know what, this is worth it so I can try to get laid. A lot of guys that are still on that bandwagon. And no hate on them if they want to do it. But the problem is, or maybe to their advantage is, they're probably in the top 10 or 20% of, rent of men. The rest of men are just exhausted by the process. And to go through months of this, just to try to have one opportunity to maybe get a girlfriend or to have a, a fun sexual encounter is becoming impossible. It's not worth the effort anymore. He says, certainly the failings of men may play their own role in the dating disaster of today's America. I've written about these failings extensively here and in my first book, United States of Fear. Masculinity in the, is in the decline in the West. Without it, dating cannot be successful. Strength, courage, mastery, and honor are the essential traits of masculinity, according to Jack Donovan, author of The Way of Men. And few men display those traits today. Yet equally few women display the essential traits of femininity either. Donovan explains that to find a woman desirable, a man, require, a man requires nothing more than for her to be pretty, carefree, and charming. Today's American women cannot even meet that expectation. And I've talked about this in other videos as well. You know, instead of play, say, maybe saying charming, we say feminine. Pretty, that's to the observer. You know, one guy might say, oh, that girl's ugly, I don't like her. And another guy says, oh, she's just my type. So the beauty part has never been a pr problem in history. It's the carefree part. You know, it's the feminine part. That's why a lot of guys will try to date younger women because they don't have the baggage. They don't have the anger. They don't have the frustration that younger women seem to be pretty carefree when it comes to that. But unfortunately, that carefree um, is, is getting fewer and fewer or, or less and less available unless, again, you're extremely attractive or even su su uh, extremely su successful. And then women seem to be on board. And the charming, the charming's gone. Women want to be boss bitches. Women want to be, you know, you go girl, strong, feminist, empowered, take the world by the horns. No man should ever tell me to do X or I'll show him. And what it's like is wrestling with a bear or it's wrestling like a bull. And if your hand slips, you're going to get gored. You're, you're going to get run over. And, and men do not want that. 
And, and no matter what else a woman brings to the table with being strong and I have my own income and look at my dream home and I have my retirement money all saved up, men do not have access to that. It does them no good because men have to have that for themselves at all times or a woman wouldn't date him usually. So she's, she's kind of like, hey, I'm just like a dude, except I'm a woman. And a guy's like, I don't find that attractive. I don't want to be with that. I want to be with a feminine, beautiful, and carefree woman. He says, I went to dinner recently at a restaurant in Westwood near UCLA campus. Dear Lord, you're in trouble already. He said, every customer appeared to be a, a university student. I noticed a group of girls walk past me as they got up from their table. They all looked and dressed alike, oversized t-shirts, baggy jeans, non-styled hair, no makeup. They appeared to be poorly dressed boys. I turned to the woman I was with and commented, they don't look attractive at all. She replied, that's the current style. I don't think they're trying to look attractive. Observing the rest, observing the rest of the young women around me, I saw that she was right. Most of the other girls resembled them. Appearance, though, is not the only way in which American women are not trying to be attractive. Now, I'll say this much. Why do women not care about what they look like in the real world? Because they're on Instagram. They're, you know, they're, they're in their bikini or looking pretty on Instagram. Their Tinder profile shows them with all the makeup and very pretty. And they're not meeting men in the real world, likely because they, they travel around in packs and no man in his right mind is ever going to try to talk to any woman in a pack like that. So they're meeting the men on the dating apps and they're swiping for them. And so when she's, you know, she can go out and not look dressed up and be, you know, prettied up and all that stuff. And the guys, uh, in, in, again, in the real world, don't see, like, aren't interacting with her. So it doesn't matter what she looks like. And all she has to do is get prettied up a few times, get some photos taken when she's out at the clubs or doing things with her friends. And that is now her representation of herself in the dating world because, you know, college kids are, are using the dating apps, as are many other people. And, and so when it's time to meet a guy, he's seen the makeup, he's seen her in the bikini, he's already interested. And so when they go out on a date, she doesn't need to dress up because he already knows what her body looks like. He already knows what she looks like with makeup. And most of the time, he's just there to smash. And so he's like, I don't care what you look like right now. Like, we'll go get a coffee and hang out for a little while. Then let's go back to your place. And the problem is the women are willing to do that. And when they're willing to do that, the rest of the time, they don't care what they look like. They don't care about presenting themselves well. He says, the typical American woman today projects limitless entitlement, ruthless competitiveness, and advanced emotional incontinence that makes it all but impossible for a man to tolerate her, much less enjoy her company. A recent Instagram video that went viral showed a French man walking the streets of LA explaining how he had just walked out on his first date in a restaurant with a local woman after observing that her lengthy food restrictions and preferences eliminated nearly every option on the metal, on the menu. He said, au revoir, Jennifer, Jennifer he concluded. An American woman, woman living in Russia posted a thread of complaints on social media after failing to get a second date with any local man after six months in Moscow. One man told me at the end of the first date that I wasn't attractive enough for him to go out with a second time. I reminded him that I earn more money than him and have a better apartment, an apartment that I pay for with my own income. Additional comments made it clear that she was ent uh, entirely unaware of the expectations of local men regarding both feminine dress and body ha uh, habitus, meaning that she maybe uh, hadn't washed her hair. Maybe she stunk, I don't know. Uh, and that Russian men couldn't care less what she makes or how nice her apartment is. They want a pretty, charming, carefree woman and aren't hesitant to say so to her face. American men may want the same, but don't have the, the clarity of mind or the courage to say so. They have become pussified. And I agree with that. So many men are afraid of cancel culture that they're afraid to speak their minds or just stand up for themselves. But apparently the Moscow men don't have any problems with that. And when a woman says, yes, but I bring all these other things to the table, again, men don't look at those as options. That's like a woman, I don't know, that's like a, that's like a, a, um, a very attractive man saying, I'm, in, I'm, I'm impotent and I have no money. 
So I can't sleep with you. I can't give you any money. Women will say, wow, you're really good to look at, but you're, I'm not interested in you and you as a man. You don't bring me anything I want. I can't get sexual satisfaction from you and, I, and you're not good for money and taking care of me. Like, what, what good are you? And, and it's unfair, but that's the way the world works. And the same thing happens when a woman is argumentative and, and she's maybe unattractive or doesn't, doesn't keep herself clean or beautiful or, or whatever. And she comes forward and says, yes, but I have money and status. And guy's like, I don't, I don't care. I, I, none of that does me any good. I, I want the other things that you're not bringing. And Western women are falling, I mean, face first into this stuff where they'll, again, the best life is the online life, but then in the real world, just like this other girl, um, let me, this here, she's 21, she's a broke single mom, no family to help her, no one to watch her kid. She's in government assistant. Um, and, and she's trying to be a content creator. Like what? And here's the interesting thing, right? There, if she's pretty and she's carefree and she's feminine, there's still a lot of men that would say, you know something, I know you're a single mom, but you're 21 and you're super hot. And if she was super nice and admitted, hey, this kid was a little bit of a mistake, but I've learned from it and I, I wanna find a good man, she could still find one. The problem is she's not chasing after a man She's chasing after a con she's chasing after a career as a content creator. Men don't care. She's only looking out for herself. And why doesn't she want to find a man to help her? Because she's been told men are worthless, that men are pigs, that the patriarchy, toxic men. And so she's been told she has to rely only upon herself to get by in the real world. Well, guess what? That's what men have to do. Women really have, at least genetically and historically, never had to do that. You're, you're telling her to go against her own, her, her own best option, really. He says, I believe the root cause of this problem in, America, women, uh, in American women is environmental. It is a problem of bad values. Women in this country have been taught that looks don't matter, that career is most important than, or more important than family, and that men are either dangerous or weak and incapable and that the world would be a better place if only women were in charge. Everything they're taught is wrong. Everything they're taught is a lie. And the fault lies with schools, media, feminism, and parents, single moms too. Uh, these institutions and individuals have corrupted their minds, their emotions, their characters. They have trained women to live in a fantasy world of us versus them and where the me is more important than the we, where one's feelings dictate truth and goodness and even virtue itself. These toxic teachings have rendered women developmentally arrested and incapable of adult partnerships with men. I did a video, I wanna say it was probably two or three years ago now. Um, yeah, I guess three years ago would be 2020. Yeah, it was probably three years ago, two or three years ago, where I was saying that snow plow parenting and the participation trophy award uh, recipients when they get to be adults are going to fail and they're gonna suffer and they're gonna be very unhappy because the real world doesn't work like that. You don't get to come in first place just because you showed up. You're not special. Not everybody loves you. You're not a unique snow flower. You are a, a cog in the wheel just like the rest of us and one day you will die and no one will ever think about you ever again. That's the way this world works. It is harsh, but it's also reality. And these kids growing up were told that they're special and you know, you're know you unique and you're better, don't let anybody tell you X, Y, Z and, and uh, there is no first place. We're all winners just for showing up. And now they're having their rocks, their feelings dashed against the rocks. And it's, it's actually not the young people's problems. It's the administrators and the teachers and the single moms and the families and everybody that taught them this stuff. That's whose fault it is. And it's gonna be the young people today that suffer. But the people that are gonna suffer is them and they need to wake up and see the truth of it, but they can't because they haven't been taught the skills of how to analyze things and how to dig out the truth of a situation and critical thinking. A matter of fact, many times they're told critical thinking is bad. There was a New York Times article on why critical thinking is bad. I don't have it pulled up, but. And, and now the truth is coming home. 
and these young people are drinking, they're unsatisfied, they're, they're on medications. And many of the times, I really believe, especially if, if you're a young man out there that's been prescribed ADHD or other medications, ask yourself, how long have I been on this? You know, have I tried being off of this? Have I talked to a doctor to see if I still need to be on this? Because there's many times that, you know, pharmacists and doctors will just toss you on something without coming to the root cause of the problem. And in the meantime, I think a lot of these medications are, are screwing kids up. And when I say kids, I don't mean like children. I mean, young men, young women, young people. Uh, I guess, I guess it would be unfair for me to call you a kid, although I'm getting up there to where just about everybody's a kid to me. <laughs> he says this tragedy harms not only men, but women, uh, men need women. I see that's where I disagree with him. He says men need women. I don't think so. You know, when we, you go back to the earliest of times when civilizations were being built, women were used for child rearing. They were used for maybe keeping the home clean. Uh, and other times they had slaves for that, which I, of course I don't agree with, but, um, but they had, women had their own roles. Well, men today, men still are the, the vast majority of creators, inventors. Men are the ones that, that are the glue of a society, you know, keeping the electric, the water, the heat, all the, the critical things running. Um, well, back throughout history, most of that, 99% of it was done by men. I think we'd be fine without women, except we do need women to take care of children. We do need women to procreate. We do need th women like that. But, uh, ev you know, everything else could be done by a man. I, I disagree that everything else could be done by a woman or else there'd be a lot more women in these dangerous jobs, these high-risk jobs. But women, willing, women are not willing to risk themselves for that much money where men are. Men will take a calculated risk and say, if I do this job, it might end me, but also I get, you know, $20,000 for a week's worth of work, they will, they will make that, they will make that risk assessment. Women don't. So I don't think men need women. We like women. We need them for procreation. But outside of that, I think society would be fine. Where the other way around, I don't. Uh, so he says men need women, but so do women need men. Despite what feminism has taught, American men today have largely decided they would simply rather be alone than continue to feel battered and exhausted by an unending stream of bad dates with unpleasant women. No healthy person wants to play with a porcupine. And in argument or in, in counter to this, I will say this much. There's a lot of women today that say, yeah, but I don't like modern men. They're effeminate. They're weak. They're apologists. They're try hard. Um, they, they don't meet up to my quote unquote high standards. And in many ways, some of these women are right. You know, you can't, you can't expect to be, you can't expect to be successful with women if you're not going to the gym and you don't, I mean, you can't do much about your, your looks, but if you look at a, a picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah, he's got a good, strong jaw on him, but he's, he's not really that good looking a guy. His nose is kind of a little wide. He's got the gap in the front teeth, but he, he built the body of an Adonis, and that brought women to him. He won uh, tournaments because of his physique. That brought women to him. He became a movie star because of his physique. That brought women to him. I don't, I don't remember the, um, his first movie that they had to even overdub. They dubbed over in English because his English was so bad. It was like uh, he was like, a, I don't know, Adonis or something like that, some Greek god in some awful movie running around in New York City. How did he get the role? He couldn't even act and speak English because of his body and because of his, his um, popularity, because of his body. There's a guy that just made it by having the best body in the world. Now you can say, hey, dude, like that's one guy. Only one guy can have the best body in the world. Agreed. But I can tell you this from firsthand experience as well as being with other friends. There was a point in time where I got in exceptionally good shape, where I would purposely wear skin tight, t-shirts because I had almost an eight pack and I had good muscle tone. And you know something? Boy, did I get attention from women. I was still five, six or five, seven or whatever, whatever I am. I was still the same height. I was still bald, but I still got attention from women. And the thing is, it's, 
it puts you in a league different from other men. If you're successful and you dress up nicely, it puts you in a league different from other men. But the problem is today that so many men say either A, I don't want to put any effort into this. Like they're, they're weak men. They just want to try to be, you know, pro-feminist and see if that, they can get into the women's good graces by agreeing with them that men are pigs and men are awful. Or, and this is the key thing, I think. This is key. A lot of men today say, I just don't care enough. Like I'll go to the gym for my own health and I want to be successful for myself, but I don't care enough to go to a gym and get in good shape to get a woman. I don't care enough to go out there and get a great job where I have lots of income to get a woman. I don't care. And why? Because women aren't worth it. Men for a very long time in history have conquered, have conquered and gone to war for women. They have um, uh, gotten very good jobs and, and always chased after a, a higher education and more income so they can impress women and get a better looking woman or have his choice of women. But when it's no longer worth the chase anymore, you get men that are like, eh, I don't really care. Like, <laughs> I'm fine just chilling and doing my own thing. And when you get men like that, you start getting problems with society. You start getting problems with people learning the trades and bettering themselves and keeping an economy floating. And I'm okay with that. I mean, you, you know, again, these good times create weak men. Weak men create hard times. But the problem is here too, that strong women, the strong women are undesirable by all men. And that's also creating hard times, I think, because guys are just like, I'm not going to better myself. Uh, you know, I'm butt ass ugly or I, I'm not doing well for myself. Why should I? It's not going to matter anyway. It's not going to land me a woman. And if it is, she's going to be an insufferable bitch. I just don't care. I think that's where we are in this timeline right now. So uh, find that an interesting story. I hope you guys uh, kind of enjoy it. And let me know what you think down below. For those of you here on Locals, um, we're going to continue on and do a dating profile of the day. Um, and uh, if you're here on YouTube, make sure to join us over there. Uh, you can become a member. It's free. You can become a supporter and see uh, the extra content that I have for like five bucks a month, which is now officially less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, thanks to inflation from uh, President Potato Head. Thank you.